The Nigerian Railway Corporation, NRC, has suspended train services between Abuja and Kaduna until further notice following the attack by bandit. More updates on the train attack. And what is the impact of too much television, too much content on child development? We'll be looking at that on the show today with a psychologist. Don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's papers and analysis. Amazing one, looking at the big stories on uh, the front pages of our papers. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. I am Messi Bopo. It's good to be back on your screen this morning. Yes, it is indeed. Uh, very, very, very um, glad to have you join us today on the show. We trust you had yourself um, a wonderful night rest. Uh, it's always a pleasure to, you know, to be in front of your TV screen. I'm talking about issues. I don't, I'm talking about things, uh, you know, that uh, will, you know, build our nation, things that will build us up as individuals and, of course, uh, just, uh, you know, enrich our lives. Uh, so we have a whole lot uh, in store for you on the show this morning. So I'm sure you just want to grab uh, maybe a cup of cocoa, coffee, tea, green tea, Chamomile tea, you like. probably would be paying for all of this adverts that you put in. <laughs> Which I for should you we hold you for that? <laughs> no, we, so don't sit back and relax. I'm sure Messi is having chamomile tea. That's not even good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll just move on straight to top trending. And the pay television is in the news. Mm, Messi, I, I was a bit excited, you know, when I um, learned of um, this. Uh, Why? Uh, Messi, oftentimes uh, you pay for subscriptions and uh, sometimes you hardly even get to, you know, to enjoy the services. You just have to because, um, well, it's one of those things that, you know, that just keep you, you know, is when you're not working. But, so, but you find that, that most of the times uh, you are not even there to 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 enjoy or to watch um, this and uh, uh, paid television. At the end of the day, uh, you pay for one month, and uh, it might have just used about uh, four or five days, one week, and um, you know. But another thing again is that um, the the rate at which uh, they go about um, increasing you know the subscription for various bouquets uh, is really becoming very alarming. And the Senate, you know, is stepping in and is demanding that pay per view or is demanding pay per view from pay TV operators. In the country, aside from that, uh, they also they've also um, constituted a panel to ensure that um, this um, price hike, you know, is looked into. Well, um, as, as as much as that sounds very fantastic, but the big question would be, um, how doable is this? I mean, is this achievable? Someone said for the first time you have the Senate, you know, talking about the interests of you know, the masses, and the question would go on. But you want to ask yourself, what kind of economy do we operate, the free market economy? In terms of price regulation, it probably might just be, you know, a little bit difficult yeah. to regulate the price because you say that the uh, forces of demand and supply uh, should actually dictate the price and not having that. You can't just really can't necessarily control price, right? But um, And so some other people have said that, if you have uh, these paid TV operators putting, uh, increasing the, the, you know, the price of your services, uh, you, you should also understand the dynamics. They operate in an economy. They operate in Nigeria. And you want to look at the ease of doing business. What's going on right now? The price of diesel is on the high. And that's number one. And so it's not that we, we live in a climate where there's constant power supply. So you want to factor in the fact that people are paying for diesel, right? <laughs> they're buying so much and they have to keep the office running and they have to keep things going on. You factor all of that. You also have to factor the fact that you're going to buy, uh, you know, all the equipment. I mean, all of this would also necessitate that, you know, services and uh, whatever would be on the high. And that might just be the reason, even though for some pay TV operators, it feels like it's part of their DNA to just go ahead That's and increase the price. So um, I don't know how viable that would be because if we operate a free market economy, it probably might just be very difficult, you know, mm. for the government to regulate the price because part of that conversation, you know, board uh, is around the fact that government needs to. They're asking, they are demanding, via they want to use legislation to say, okay, hey, you need to bring down the prices of mm. um, services. 
but let's let's see how that pans out okay. and that that argument has been put out but on the other hand uh, pay as you pay per view pay per view and some people are saying pay pay as you go they're the same yeah no no but we, we don't know what pay per view might necessarily no, mean we so, so if the pay per view view another time okay at the time and so which makes a lot of sense mm. because sometimes you have people who um like you have mentioned, mm. you pay for these services because it's a month-to-month -month yeah, kind of payment. Yeah, some might not even be around. So if you if you pay your if your subscription is monthly, mm. and sometimes in the month, how many times are you even available to even watch? Mm -hmm. You know, from morning till uh, the dawn of the day, how yeah. many times are you available? And sometimes also power issue. Mm. You will look at that. So so that's also I think that's very yeah, that that, that that's something fantastic. Okay. That's the one. Part of the argument that is very fantastic and if we're able to achieve that it would be great so as you use you actually pay for what you're using mm. because most times a lot of people pay for services that they're not they using use. we just pay tv or pray to, mm. or pray to you know, you know which, which uh, were some of the issues we had uh, for electricity for telephony you know you know before now when uh, thank god for per second billing you know when when we started with the gsm operation and every other time you know even if you've just used one second for uh, two seconds you're charged a full minute. So the other 50 seconds you didn't use, you're actually paying for that you did not use. So over time, they now brought in the whole concept of per second bill, which is what is done globally. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we started with them per minute bill. Just because of we started newly, then then competition actually stepped in. And I think it was Glow then that started the whole per second billing. You know, but then the thing for me right now is that you should not be paying for what or the services you are not using. And then again, I think the, the market needs to be open. There need to be competition. If you had a lot of competition and um, the the operators are really competing maybe neck to neck uh, and uh, you know there'll be healthy rivalry and um, the customers have like um, an array Different of um, operators you know to choose from so if this one is not really doing well you move to the next but right now i think we just have almost like a monopoly of uh, you know uh, pay tv here in uh, nigeria uh, 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 and i think it's a thing that we you know we need to because monopoly has never been very favorable in the capital system mm. i mean in a capitalist system uh, it just allows one person to be in control of the market and of course they can do as they will and uh, knowing that people do not have an option but to be very frank with you i think a lot of people have moved away yeah. a lot of persons have moved away from pay tv uh you know subscription and what have you they have a lot of people yeah, well, have moved lot, away lot, lot. And, and you know what that means for us it's not good business for us yeah. You know, for us in the media, it's not good business mm. because these days you you probably would have a lot of people who would say, "Oh, yeah, I don't watch TV. On, um, I don't watch TV." And then we're we streaming, we're streaming mm. movies, we're streaming what have you, and people are not necessarily paying attention to what yeah, you have on the PA TV. And because you you need to look at it at the end of the day, if you chunk out all of that amount, you know, to pay, mm. uh, you begin to ask yourself, what's the content? What are we being? What are we paying for exactly? The content you're paying for, yeah, yes. actually, are you getting money, uh, value, value for, your for, money? for your money? So, but um, first, the argument this has been put out is very valid. PSU view would be great because uh, if you look at the current realities of our country, you talk about the constant power. Uh, that's not available to everybody. And you also talk about availability. Uh, for, for those who actually get to do the 9 to 5 job, uh, how many times are they available you know, to uh, be around? So it's a lot of exploitation and extortion that's mm. going on. Mm -hmm. But in, on the other hand, you talk about uh, the price regulation and controlling. I don't know how that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Let's just see how it goes. And, uh, but the fact is that I would want to you know, enjoy services and then pay for them and not pay for them not using you know uh, at the end of the day but let's uh, move away from that one uh, there is a video that um, is actually trending uh, somewhere I think it originated somewhere from uh, I'm not sure again uh, the southeast or so or there but it was one of those um, states uh, it's in a dual state where where talk the cultist issue no, uh, yeah, that video where, you know, uh, a child was actually, well, I see more or less that she was left out in the cold while the, uh, the people she supposedly, uh, you know, uh, live with were, you know, were actually indoors sleeping and it was like in the wee hours of the night and the, the child was just left in the cold. But I understand that uh, uh, we have to take the video, we'll watch that. Uh, some some of it was um, uh, said in the Igbo language, we tried to do a bit of translation. We'll come back and talk more about it in a moment. Stay with us. Locked outside by the madam by this time of the night. Let me show you people. See time. See time. See time. 
See time. This is 12.18 a.m. Madam, lock the housemaid, person picking. Look, we are just coming back from the location now. Somebody locked somebody's daughter outside by this time of the night. On the cold. On the cold, they go to No, be not going nowhere. Are you kidding me? Who is here? If you don't need person picking, you don't go, you don't go, go drop and for a in mama house. Imagine one mother outside by this time of the night. Now, now, go now, run around with two more, okay? Okay, I'll be on your black in your damn man. She's not eating. She's not drunk. Nothing more. What if one mother does that? But you, but you use that? Come on, run in labor. You don't know how to run at night. Now, now, with your children. If something happens to her. How are you, my man? Can you, can you? We can't miss a woman in a while on the water. How can you lock somebody's daughter outside by this time of the night? And you go in and see who's a man with them. Which kind of wickedness is this? Good evening, sir. Good evening. No, I don't want to come in. No, I don't want to come in. Good evening. My name is Charles. We were passing here about past few years. We saw this here sitting here. This is what happened. I would have known what. I would have liked my wife to see you here. Do you know why? I understand. This is a she sent to go to I came back and I'm after and I got to where is this? I didn't know. Are you serious? Yes. I was thinking that she's at home. Sleeping. Listen, stop crying. Don't cry. No, I want I want my wife to see people, to see what we have done. I know why I want to. I know what I want to do. I have been sleeping on the head of my dog, back in back. I don't know where to go about that. I have been feeling yeah. which knocking. Is it my all right, welcome back. Uh, you just um, watched the video for yourself. Um, it is um, self-explanatory. You know. The child was locked out uh, in the wee hours of the morning. Uh, from what we saw from that village, it was about um, 18 minutes past uh, midnight, and um, she was left out in the cold to sleep. Uh, she was left in the lodge, and um, the the people her uh, the people she supposedly lives with uh, or live with, you know left her there and they, according to the man who was uh, uh, talking in the background, uh, he said um, um, they had um, the mind, they had the, uh, the infantry, they had, um, <laughs> they just went to bed, you know, and left the child there and that they, couldn't, they could not even care less. Mercy, these are some of the things we see, you know, every other time people just bring in house helps and um, at the end of the day, they subject them, these um, children to all sorts of um, maltreatment, mistreatment, um, something they would not ordinarily do, you know, to their own children. So, um, you, you, I mean, it's something that's been going on when we talk about child abuse. Uh, we are always very quick and fast to limit it to sexual harassment and, you know, sexual assault. In most cases, we always think that child abuse and while, you know, child abuse general would just be about someone trying to harass your child sexually. But this is also part of child abuse. It is. And uh, if you look at it in its definition. So child abuse is not necessarily limited to sexual, sexual well. abuse or, you know, harassment Physical, and yeah. all of that. But when you treat a child in this, you know, in this act, I mean, if you treat a child like this, because anything would have happened to that child. And according to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a child is a child. Was you looking at children if you're not up to the age of 18? So mm. uh, between 0 to 18, you're still a child, right? And I, I would constantly say that we have lost humanity. So we live, we, we live in a climb. We need to understand that as human beings, uh, we're flawed. Okay, and so how do we treat children? It's not like I have a child, but I'm thinking that if someone has, you know, someone has done something wrong, there should be several ways to punish them, rather than expose them, you know, to that kind of rigs. And you ask yourself, a lot of people will say, okay, if that child were yours, would you be comfortable shutting your eyes in a time as this, 
this you know very crucial and very very um, sensitive period that we live in Nigeria where we know what happens with ritual killing kidnapping and what have you how 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 are you comfortable that I can't you, even you shut your yourself. eyes and you know you sleep knowing that that child could be uh, you know that child is out there just and exposed could have happened to that child and the reason that you're a parent or a guardian is that the reason these children are children and the, the law says well, of course we have the child act child right act, child right act. Uh, the problem is it's been domesticated in about 28 states most states uh, Nigeria. you still have a, a lot of states that have not domesticated and with the states that have domesticated how effective is it do we implement it how how far have we gone with the child right act for states that have domesticated the Right, so you believe that this a child is a child. The reason why you know the constitution will say a child is a child until they are eighteen is because they don't. At this point in time, you're supposed to make decisions for, for them. them. You're supposed to protect them. Uh, they, they don't. They can't take decisions on their own. The and that's why you are there to guide them. You're there to protect them. You know, physically, mentally, uh, mentally. You know, health wise, Literally. everywhere. I mean, in all ramification of a human being. You are supposed to be their guardian up until the age that you know they are able to make decisions for themselves. So it's really saddening that those who should be protecting the children are abusing the children. And let's not even begin to talk about the law. The laws were created by man. We created these laws. But let's even begin to look at our conscience. How like how humanity. Because, I mean, this is not even I'm not surprised because this is not even this is not even the first time we're having a situation no, like not. this. I mean, this is even uh, not up to cases that one has actually heard of. There's, there are worse cases than this. But not to make nonsense of this one, not to say that this is not uh, you know, a child abuse. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that it is sad. And this practice is going on every day. It's a practice that's ongoing. And sometimes it's not reported. But this is one out of so many. And then you have children. For instance, why do you even, even have to, the fact that you mm -hmm. even have a child that is 17, that's child labor. What are you doing with it? So, so you have a lot of people who then have maids as six, seven, eight, nine, ten, even eleven, than twelve. Six, you know, you you just need to know that you are engaging in child labor, yeah. and that and that's a crime, and it that's crime. and that's that's a crime against the state. So, but of course, this is our country. We are still developing, and that will be <laughs> the excuse. We're yet to get it all properly, but well, okay, I, I, I think that we. Mostly for me, I would yeah. say let's keep the law aside. As much as the law is okay. important, yeah. what is important for us, you know, to approach our, our conscience. Yes, we should. Uh, but I understand we have um, to move on. But then again, I just feel that um, that incident should not be swept under the carpet. It should be in, um, investigated. We have um, the Ministry of um, Youth and Social Development. They should uh, look into it. We have that um, also in ver most of the states. So that incident should actually be looked into cursorily. But before we leave um, Top Trend, and the last we'll talk about is um, uh, Yahoo Boy's mother uh, somewhere in a those state, Benin City, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, who um, bagged... Um, uh, five years, uh, uh, or five year jail term. You know, message was some sort. Of, I don't know if we could just look at it very quickly before we just move to off the press. Look at her. You know, she was um, arrested by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. You know, the, the I don't even know what to say, but it's, it's uh, you know, one would say this might just be a step in the right direction. There's been mm. a lot of ideology surrounding the Yahoo Yahoo boys, mm. and some people feel that this kind of practice is that uh, we're actually taking advantage of the exploitation. I mean, it's like a, a revenge, it's like a payback for what was done, you know, to Africa, the probably to Nigeria, <laughs> and so it's a time, you know, to take advantage. But I mean, a crime is a crime, it is a crime uh, when you take something that does not belong to you you are a thief however you do it and that's what it is but um, it still boils down you know to one and the same thing we live in a society where uh, some of this I mean, a lot of things have become a normal now. We have condoned it. So you see a parents lot of parents... celebrate, you yes. know, when children bring in cars, they don't even have jobs, and they just come with lots of um, gifts, and you don't question them. So, so I, I, grew, I, grew up, I grew up from... I grew up in a background where you have to be accountable for almost everything that mm -hmm. you have. 
Uh, it's not possible that you you come back with a barrier that's not yours and you will not be questioned how you got, how it. You got it. It's not possible that you are, you're spending and you're living some kind of life and you will not be questioned. But these days, I feel like, uh, you know, parents have actually closed their eyes. A lot of they parents. They look the other way. I will not say entirely, not the entire parents, because it will be hasty generalization. But most parents have shut their eyes against some of this. And we're not holding our children accountable. And accountability does not necessarily, because we're asking that the government should be accountable. But like I always about us? What about the problem the that front? we face starts from the home front. It's a fact because family is a combination of our entire society. So my family, your family, Shay's family, everybody's family becomes a society at the end of the day. And before we grow larger to, you know, a bigger society. And so if we're not able to be accountable at, mm. you know, the family level, at what point do we become accountable? So what right do we have to begin to ask our government, uh, right. you know, uh, officers and people say, let's be accountable. But that said, we're being prompted to move away and that's because we're out of time thank you so much for being part of uh the show this morning top trending we'll take a break when we return we'll be time for off the press please stay with us